Hi everyone, I'm Nelly Hakopian and today we will talk about the fixed wing UAV reverse engineering for delivery purposes. In today's agenda is a small introduction about the UAVs and the predecessor model that I've chosen, the problems identified during the testing and the possible solution with new requirements set for the uh, designing model. Then we'll talk about the uh, 3D design, the scanning and reverse engineering process. The manufacturing process will be detailed explained, the uh, process planning and code generation and techniques used while manufacturing. Assembling and the testing component is the last component that we will discuss. In recent years, UAVs become integrated part in many spheres of life, but mainly uh, cargo delivery cur purposes, they are used, agricultural, military purposes, of course, data collection, as well as educational purposes, and so on and so forth. For this project, we will discuss the fighter model of Make Fly Easy Company, uh, which is a fixed wing model used for delivery. Uh, it has a wingspan of 2 meter 43 centimeters with maximum payload capacity of 1.5 kilograms. Uh, this drone was tested by my, my, my advisor, Vahan, and uh, during the testing process, it appeared to have some uh, structural limitations in wing structure, also weak connection of two parts of the tail, um, two parts of the fuselage, sorry. Uh, also, the payload capacity for a uh, drone with this huge uh, wing span was too low, considering 1.5. Uh, and also the payload volume was limited because it is housed, housed within the fuselage. So with that in mind, we decided to set new requirements, uh, which is that the drone that we designed is needs to have 5 kg payload capacity. And for the structural reinforcement purposes, the wing structure modification was applied. Uh, with that purposes also, the fiberglass cover shell is drone is covered with fiberglass cover shell and new design is integrated for the tail part. Uh, we replaced the load from the in the from the inside of fuselage to hang it outside of it so that the volume is not that limited. Also the fuselage can be designed narrower if the load is not that big. It won't disturb. <laughs> um, so after the requirements set, the mo modeling process started, and it started with 3D scanning of the components. As the wing structure was decided to keep the same uh, wing shape, uh, we took a 3D scan of it to match it with maximal precision. The 3D scan was done in our lab with the help of Arman Asatian. Uh, the other property that we decided to keep the same is the angle, angle of incidence. Uh, we, for that reason, the fuselage scan was made, but as the fuselage was huge, not wall was needed. Uh, we took a small part of fuselage, which was the parallel to the longitudinal axis, and also the part from which the uh, wing cord line can be uh, drawn, and the angle was calculated using SOLIDWORKS. Uh, software. The angle for this drone is 3.8 degrees. Uh, after these two scanning process, which are the main fo uh, driving force, the modeling of the UAV started. The initial initial model was just the uh, UAV's wing with the same airflow structure which had the fighter drone, uh, but then later when the structure was approved by supervisors and advisors, the, uh, it had some structural uh, modifications because we decided to attach this part of drone uh, to the fuselage to be f securely attached and so that the wing will be this long. <laughs> uh, then the carbon rod and uh, cuts for carbon rods and wirings uh, were uh, made also servo motor housing for the future <laughs> when it is manufactured. Uh, then the DC motor covers are designed, and for this part, uh, 
it's important to have some uh, more space for ESC mo for ESC wires. Also, in this part, which uh, is important to attach the two parts of the cover together, is use double plywood structure, which ensures more reliable mo motor mounting. Also, motor mounting. Uh, modeling of the fuselage. The fuselage is uh, designed from scra scratch uh, and uh, keeping the length of the fuselage the same. Uh, it is 145 uh, centimeters. Um, when the model of the fuselage, shape of the fuselage was approved, the uh, other modification was, was were made. Uh, the wing connections and the tail part connections and this part of modification is done for manufacturing purposes which will be later discussed. Also the fuselage is the main um, housing for electrical components. This is uh, where the pockets are needed. Uh, the dimensions of the fuselage are represented uh, also, we decided to narrow down the second part of the fuselage. It was just an additional weight for the fighter model, and we decided to get rid of it. Uh, overall, the UAV structure is like a human body structure for which the this part of fuselage, which is made out of plywood, uh, serves as a spline, spine and the neural system of fuselage is the wirings with electrical for electrical components and the bones are considered the carbon rods that are all over the tail and the wing part. Uh, the manufacturing process, when the design was finally approved, we move on to the next step for the manufacturing uh, of the wing and tail parts, the same approach was used, which is three axis milling. Uh, for this process, we cr decided to do it in this way. We milled the first surface of the face, then we milled the contour template for it so with the inverse surface, so that the milled face can fit on it precisely. And precisely, then the second phase of the model is milled and the rods and housing cuts are done after. Uh, for this uh, modeling process, the 8 mm end mill tool is used for area clearance for the contour template and 8 mm ball nose tools e tool is used for uh, the surface surfacing process. The cuts for wiring and servo motor are also done with end mill because in this case the sharp angles are important. <laughs> Sorry for that. Uh, then the four axis manufacturing process begins, which is decided to be the best approach for the fuselage, for the fuselage manufacturing. Uh, having a, as a rotational axis, it gives opportunity to have the part milled from all the uh, from all sides. Uh, but the machine had some limitations. This is that is the reason that. Uh, the fuselage is split into the half. Um, actually, uh, for this, the block for uh, was needed to cr be created because the fuselage is thicker than the material that we are working with. Uh, so four parts of the binoplex was, were glued together with the plywood core inside, which added additional uh, structural strength. Uh, when the two parts of the fuselage are uh, milled, the next step is to mill the electronic part uh, housings and to do that cuts. Uh, for this, the best approach is to use the five axis milling machine to uh, reach the absolute accuracy. Uh, to place the fuselage model in the same position and uh, precise precision, uh, the contour template was milled also using the CNC machine. And as you can see in this video, it is housed within it uh, and then fixed so that during the milling process, 
it doesn't move. Uh, the milling process for the housing is done with two steps because having the plywood as a core inside, the different step down is needed because the plywood is a harder material than the plex is. Uh, when the pockets are milled, then the airspeed sensor slot is milling, and in this case you can see that the machine works in an angle. Uh, also with the same techniques, the slots for the uh, wiring and the carbon cuts are made. Uh, the final step of manufacturing is the 3D printing of some details. The DC motor, motor covers, which design we have already discussed, uh, the motor uh, housing for servo motors, which was needed to be the precise same uh, sizes so that no additional glue is used. Mm. Also, your speed sensor handle is uh, 3D printed, which is this part, and I don't have the photo of it. <laughs> Uh, for the plywood parts, uh, plywood was uh, machined with laser cutting tool uh, because it is easier and faster and precise. Uh, the plywood is used for, uh, to shape the block for the fuselage as we have already talked about. And the fuselage pockets are reinforced using the plywood and wing and tail connections in these parts are also then using the plywood as a base. Then, when having all these components together, we started the mechanical assembling. It started with assembling this house uh, pockets for the fuselage and glued two parts of the fuselage together. Having the plywood in uh, both sides of it, it uh, ensured the uh, large surface to be glued together and uh, be fixed after. Uh, usage. Also, we decided to fix that connection using fiberglass as a cover shell. And in this photo, also all the components are uh, fiberglass covered. Uh, the fiberglass it was important to have in this part where the wings and the fuselage are fixed together. This is. <laughs> When having all the mechanical um, uh, assemblings done, then the electrical components were assembled. For for this part, the, uh, for this drone, the 5S8P uh, batteries are used and soldered together by me. <laughs> <laughs> then the drone was finally assembled, and we decided to make it pink. <laughs> <laughs> and the little rose on it. <laughs> so after the final assembling, that was time for the testing. <laughs> These are natural reactions, so I decided to keep the voice. <laughs> The wind, the wind during the testing process was uh, measured 14 mm, meter per second, approximately 50 kilometer per hour. Thank you. I have a few questions actually. Uh, the uh, drone has been designed for payload delivery 
uh, as I can see from your paper, your payload will be externally mounted. Uh, in your paper, you have mentioned that you have uh, chosen V-tail for minimizing external damage. Can you explain if the payload is not delivered uh, on landing, uh, how, how you are going to minimize the damage to payload? Okay, because it, it is externally mounted. Uh, the payload is we so that the payload will be delivered and then dropped. So during the landing process, the payload will not be attached. Okay, so you have to have em emergency uh, drop of the payload. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, and uh, again, why V-tail? Because it, it makes control more difficult. Uh, we chose V-tail because uh, it has the standard tail structure and during the landing process it also it heated the ground make it the connection weak from around this part is not the same drone so we decided to make it retail to have to not have that problem <laughs> the ground heating problem is solved in this way Yes, the tail is integrated from the same company's believer model and is um, scaled with proportionally to this drum. Yeah, you so you scaled it. I mean, you did not calculate the distance from from the uh, wings to tail and the tail size. So it's usually it's calculated from the distance from the wings and the center of gravity up to the tail should be calculated for the tail size. So you did just did it proportionally or you calculated? I did it proportionally because it is uh, just a capstone project. So we decided yeah. not to <laughs> think about this that much. Got it. Because the manufacturing process and the modeling process kept the same, but it added additional things to yeah, do. Yeah. And and because um, of the time limitations. How, how you made the decision to go with lithium e ions versus lithium uh, polymer and using uh, Y5S and not like 3 or 4S? Uh, actually, all the electrical parts component decisions were made with consultation with my advisor Vahan Igitranian because the main focus of the project was the mechanical design and mechanical assembly and manufacturing of the process. So. Um, the uh, decisions were made considering his calculations and experience in this sphere. And with the last question, have you considered using a hot wire cutting for the Penoplex instead of the CNC? Uh, actually, we have not because of available CNC machines. Okay, <laughs> nice. Thank you. Thank you. Um, you just mentioned that the mechanical process and building it was the important aspect. Uh, I'm going to not ask about that. You mentioned, uh, <laughs> you mentioned that you kept the angle of incidence the same. Usually the angle of incidence is designed so that you fly straight for whatever conditions that you are designing for. Uh, you've added a lot of structural components, weights, and so on and so forth. Uh, aerodynamically, is the aircraft exactly or similar to what you were reverse engineering, or have you changed the aerodynamics and made any calculations so that, I mean, it's flying, it's great, <laughs> but, uh, and it's fantastic, but did you do any, any reverse engineering on that, making sure that whatever you're designing uh, the center of gravity isn't shifting too much to affect its stability and also its aerodynamics. Uh, the center of gravity for this drone is kep kept the same and calculating the distance from the nose part uh, is the same. Uh, also, we for that reason, we decided not to change the length of the fuselage so that that properties won't change. Uh, to Find the CG, we added these uh, small parts. They have holes inside, so during when placing the battery, we uh, just uh, try to fix them, then well <laughs> do it like this. Thank you.
Thank you, sir.